I'm going to talk today about augmented reality and virtual reality and create unforgettable experiences. I'm super impressed also by what the healthcare industry is doing in this area, and I'll cover some of those things. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about Morningstar. Um, we're a homegrown company. We started right here in Chicago in Joe Mansueto's apartment, and we've grown from a local startup to a global research company. Um, we're headquartered here in Chicago, and we have offices in 27 countries. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our mission. We, we all, we're all about empowering investors, and now more than ever, our mission is more important. And we empower investors through our research, through data, through design, and through technology. And today I'm going to talk about how our research, data, design, and technology all really fueled our whole premise behind why we wanted to use augmented reality and virtual reality to connect with investors. So trends driving adoption, I thought I'd cover some of this, um, cover this a little bit last year as well, but the smartphone accessibility and capabilities are vast. Our mobile phones are becoming more powerful than ever. And so there's a lot we can do with augmented reality apps. And there's application across a variety of industries. That's again why augmented reality is becoming so popular is because it really applies to fashion and retail and as well as healthcare and finance, more regulated industries. So there's a lot of opportunities, especially with AR, um, and then being untethered. So being able to go anywhere with your device is really key. If you're not tethered to um, your, a laptop or a stationary place, you can really do a lot more with both augmented reality and virtual reality. And some of those devices include the Magic Leap, which is something that you see here in this photo, Oculus Go. Um, Oculus also just came out with the Rift S, which is um, the headset that you don't need all the sensors and, this, and the cords. And then of course, like any consumer trend, any trend in order for it to really pick up and get wider adoption, it needs to be affordable. And those, those devices are becoming more affordable and more accessible. I thought this was an interesting stat. Um, the global market for artificial and virtual reality in healthcare in particular is projected to reach 5.1 billion by 2025. And this is according to a report by Grandview Research. And again, as I was studying for this, this particular session, um, and also I've just been really inspired by what the healthcare industry is doing, um, they're using AR and VR in a variety of ways, everything from drug design process and how to really think about how the molecules connect and what, how drugs can be designed for different types of um, treatments, medical training, um, really learning about the human anatomy through simulation, um, surgeons preparing for complicated surgeries through VR, being able to walk through a surgery and prepare for that surgery and maybe the things that could go possibly wrong so that they're prepared going into a surgery. Pain relief is another trend. Um, I, actually, they're using testing out VR um, to mitigate pain during, during labor, which I thought was really interesting. And then vein visualization. So there's a lot of different applications um, from the complex um, to the more everyday um, going on in, in the healthcare industry in these, in these areas. Another trend I'll just be discussing today is a trend of gamification and how that really helps your patients, your clients really be more motivated to try new things. Maybe they're motivated to um, incite more be, uh, improved health behaviors. So through gamification, um, both in AR and VR, you can motivate people towards better behaviors and also to have fun along the way while they're learning new things. Um, in 2019, gamification was becoming more mature and it started to shift from extrinsic motivation design, rewards and incentives, to intrinsic motivation design. So making things actually fun. So again, when we think about healthcare and behaviors, yes, you can reward through gamification and that's important, but how can you also make taking care of yourself fun, whether that's cooking, exercise, um, check-ins with your doctor, thinking about ways to motivate people. Um, this is just a resource that I included in this deck. Um, I think it's a great resource in terms of the different types of gamification and how you can tap into people's instincts. So some people like to achieve things. So challenges, certificates, learning levels, quests, that appeals to the achiever. That's the box in green. But maybe someone's a philanthropist. They're more interested in altruistic purpose, caretaking, um, collections or gifts or sharing. So this chart will really help you as you're thinking about augmented reality and virtual reality challenges and how to speak to different types of patients or clients in your universe. And so that, this will be in the deck that Hope can distribute to the attendees. 
Another big trend, and I think it's specifically relevant to um, the healthcare industry, is building empathy. You know, empathy is all about how can we relate and really understand what someone else is going through. And I think that's critically important when we're dealing with complex diseases and healthcare challenges. And something that we tapped into when we think about things at Morningstar, when we think about investors and what they're going. I'll give you an example. But one of the first examples I think is really interesting is just, again, teaching empathy in the medical field. This is actually a virtual reality simulation out of the New England uh, medical labs of macular degeneration. So if you've known anyone in your family or if you have friends that um, have older people in their lives that have gone through macular degeneration, what's like to lose their eyesight and slowly go blind, um, this simulation demonstrates what that experience is like and helps doctors um, think about life care style and things that they might need to account for as they're going through this process. So just coming back to the basics, you know, what is augmented reality? It's really adding graphics, sounds, and touch feedback into our natural world and creating an enhanced user experience. So using something like um, a mobile phone, um, Google and Facebook are also developing augmented reality glasses um, going further down those paths to create devices that set up AR simulations. So it's adding things to our current environment. And this is a really useful quote. It really helped me think about the differences between AR and VR. Virtual reality, hello? Is there a question? Okay, okay, good. Um, so virtual reality views the physical world as a distraction. So that's why you, when you put that headset on, your the world around you goes away and you're immersed in that virtual reality world. Whereas AR views the physical world as a real asset. So how can we layer on information in the world around us that really is a benefit and actually is additive to what we're doing for that moment? I'm gonna get into um, examples of how we've used this at Morningstar um, and how it's really supports empowering investors with augmented reality. And we're actually into our third year on our AR and VR journey. So I've got some stats now and some um, just some information on how we keep building upon this year over year. So in 2019, our goal is we wanted to feature Morningstar data in an interactive format. So we offer, have a lot of investment data and research um, and can really fuel our AR experience. We also at our conferences wanted to connect Morningstar people and products through an interactive gamification feature and a way and wanted to game uh, engage attendees. And then the new opportunity that we had, so we publish a magazine quarterly, it's called Morningstar Magazine. Um, and we, just like any print medium, once it goes to print, um, sometimes that data or information could be out of date, especially if it's very data heavy. So we were able to plug in our data feeds into our augmented reality app and there's a few different um, maps and pieces throughout the magazine that um, have data that as of a certain date, that's what the data reflects in the printed piece. But once someone uses the augmented reality app, they can see the data for five the yesterday, uh, one year, five years, 10 years. So they can see that what's happening in the marketplace over a short period of time or a long period of time. And it just gives them more ways to interact and use information. So that's reflected in our global markets parameter and our valuation lends these two large maps that are in the, each issue of the magazine. And I'll say too, in terms of prioritizing, um, we really focused on things, again, this, these maps are in each issue of the magazine. So it made sense for us to um, work on the data feeds and make sure these applications worked because we could use it more than one time. So it was very, a good use of our developers time. The other thing that we've leveraged um, I'm sure a lot of your, your teams are producing videos all the time, um, just because that's such a popular communication method now. Um, we have a lot of videos with our analysts. So we, we feature videos that partner with content in the magazine and you can scan these AR triggers in the magazine and watch a video from one of our analysts um, just further explaining a trend or something that this person covered in the article. So it just enhances that content in another way. And then, because design is so central to Morningstar, um, we created, a, our developers created a 3D magazine cover and it just, it created this wow factor when people scanned the cover of the magazine, really came to life in 3D. And just again, it helps people differentiate Morningstar among financial publications. So one of the other things that we did, so this used to be just an app that was used at our conferences. 
And so it, when, by adding the content to the magazine, it keeps the conference content and the magazine content relevant throughout the year. Um, at the conference itself, again, we wanted to drive a lot of engagement throughout the exhibit hall. We have a large exhibit hall with over 180 spaces and companies to interact with. And so we place um, AR tokens throughout the space where we wanted to drive traffic. And then we also worked with our ambassadors, Morningstar folks, to um, have tokens on their badge. And you know, one of the great things about any type of technology is you can always look at the data to see if it's working or if it's not working. And so one of the great things that we saw, um, we had about 450 people download the app in 2019, and there were over 1,200 token scans. And the list that you see here were all key areas that we had identified that we wanted to drive traffic and drive engagement into these spaces. So these are our top 10, and a lot of them are all Morningstar places and spaces. And then the other thing, going back to gamification, um, people were scanning tokens, um, and then those tokens could be turned into um, exchanged for Morningstar branded swag. So again, we want our brand out in the marketplace. We want our clients and people who um, love Morningstar to proudly wear Morningstar out and about in their daily life. So we had shirts, we had branded Nike hats, we had um, water bottles, socks, um, bags, so they could turn these these things in for merchandise. And we had over 1,300 tokens turned in for Morningstar branded materials. And then I, again, what's the takeaway of what's, um, it doesn't matter if this doesn't resonate with your audience. Um, you know, AR is definitely one of those new shiny objects in the marketplace. And so um, we got some great feedback. These are both people, influencers in the financial services space. Um, and I love what Bill Winterberg had to say, a better AR experience, analyst videos pop up using the AR app over the analyst column in Morningstar Magazine. And then another person responded to that post and just said, I really like how Morningstar brought AR to the conference in practical ways. So again, we wanted to make sure the AR functionality added value and wasn't just a shiny object. Um, so um, it was cool to see that we had, we had good feedback from some of key influencers in the space. As I mentioned, uh, Morningstar Magazine, um, because it comes out quarterly, the app doesn't just have a one-time application at the Morningstar Investment Conference. It can live over each time, over the whole year as each magazine is released. And we noted that after the conference, 58% of app downloads occurred after the conference. So we're continuing to see app engagement and downloads um, with each issue of the magazine. And these, um, this, this list just notes where we had different AR triggers. So those are the little squares um, that we had throughout the magazine that indicated um, where you could find data with, with AR or an AR experience. Um, and so videos and data are definitely our top experiences and again, helped us decide that we wanna keep investing our development time in, in those AR experiences. As we move into 2020, um, some of the things that we're prioritizing is also allowing advertisers in our magazine to use AR to connect with um, with investors. So a lot of our um, advertisers are asset management firms who have a lot of thought leadership and content. And so um, we'll be featuring triggers in their ads and that gives them an opportunity, perhaps their chief investment officer can be sharing um, just a perspective on the market. You could download a white paper from those AR triggers. So it gives the um, advertiser another way to connect with investors and share their thought leadership. And then the other piece based on our experience and our success with the Discover game, um, we're gonna actually um, increase our engagement on the sponsor side and, and include more sponsor opportunities to use the augmented reality app. So we're pretty excited about that going into our conference this year. Next, I'm gonna talk about empowering investors with virtual reality. Um, this is a, actually a shot of um, our VR experience last year in Sydney, Australia. Um, so just level setting again, virtual reality is a three-dimensional computer generated environment. You put that headset on and it's all around you and you can explore and interact with that environment when you're using um, the hand controllers. You actually become a part of that, that environment. Um, this quote again, I think is really important just in terms of reinforcing how the brain works and why VR is so impactful. When you watch a module through the headset, your brain feels like you've actually experienced a, a, a situation. And at Walmart, when they've used this for training, they've actually seen that VR training boosts confidence and retention 
while also improving test scores 10 to 15%. So if you're thinking about rolling out a training program for employees um, or for patients, um, BR could be a very good opportunity for, for your organization. At our conference, we wanted to connect the value of advice. One of Kunal uh, Kapoor's, our CEO's key, keynote, key theme from his keynote speech. Um, we also had various calls to action. Um, one of our first VR simulations had a call to action to learn more about our behavioral science research. Um, the, this year and last year, we um, used a call to action more related to ESG or environmental, social, and governance um, investing opportunities. So our first year, again, going back to empathy, we wanted advisors to really think about what is it like as an investor? How can they be more empathetic to their day-to-day -day lives? And we created three investing scenarios about three different investors. The retiree, um, a gentleman who was experiencing cognitive decline, older, later, in, he's older, he's later in his lifetime, um, and he is experiencing like eyesight problems, shaky hands. He's not as capable about making investment decisions as he once was. Henry is the high earner, not rich yet. So a younger guy um, in his prime earning years and very easily influenced by lots of market turmoil. And then the wife who, um, she doesn't have a very good relationship with the financial advisor. Her husband's always taking care of those situations. Um, but this scenario was based on the stat that 52% of uh, wives tend to leave the financial advisor if their spouse dies. So all three of these scenarios were based on scenario investors that advisors experience, um, client experiences, um, and how they could better serve those clients. <clears throat> In 2018, we had over 400, 400 sessions. So 400 people went through these experiences, spent over 25 hours, spent 25 hours immersed in VR. And as a result of those um, our use of the, at the conference, we actually used these same scenarios in over five different client events. So one investment at the conference led to lots of other opportunities to engage with clients through VR at other events. And that wasn't a part of our original plan, but kind of a nice outcome. Another unexpected outcome, but something that was um, great is um, again, going back to training, after we completed the scenario development for the conference, we had interest from our team in India um, to use these same VR scenarios. So last year we rolled out a training program in India um, to help our employees and our colleagues in India really understand, get closer to the investor. Um, and as a result of the training, a lot of um, our employees in India said, um, I really understand, I have a better understanding of what financial advisors do and how important they are. I understand some of the investor challenges, and more importantly, I understand Morningstar and how we, we help investors. So that was a great outcome, and we're continuing to expand this training program. So an investment we made two years ago is continuing to reap some nice benefits through additional client events and training. Um, as we continued our VR journey, some of the feedback, and this is with any technology, you always want to keep iterating and keep improving your experiences. And so we really um, wanted to help investors see the impact of investing choices. And we also got feedback from our first round of in, um, first round of VR that people really wanted to interact more. They wanted to be able to make investment choices and have a more interactive experience. Um, Again, we leaned on the gamification and more interaction. And then we were also able to um, further uh, drive better leads uh, through a better business case outcome. So in 2019, we created the Sustainable Earth VR experience. The, the image that you see here is what you saw when you put the headset on. You're placed in front of a beautiful globe. It was very colorful, interactive. Um, there were animals running around, lots of flora and fauna. Um, and you could actually pull the earth closer to you and really look at it. And then there were these investment cards that you could choose and place them on the earth. And then you could see the impact of your investment choice. So for example, one of the options was an investment in a technology company. Um, they have a data breach and that's affected millions of consumers. So that had a negative impact on the market and your portfolio. In other scenario, you could pick a company um, that, uh, like an oil company. And even though sometimes people think oil is necessarily negative. Um, this oil company actually does a really good job managing their environmental impact and also has really good work-life balance policies for their employees. So they have a really positive impact in terms of the governance um, factor of your portfolio. So there were lots of different investing factors that impacted both the community and the environment. And you could see that play out in your portfolio. 
We also took the opportunity to take this game global. So the first year we only did this in the US. Um, in 2019, we took this game to London, Chicago, Sydney, and Mumbai, our four largest events around the world. And we really thought through how to make this game relevant in each market, and it was very effective. Um, across these four conferences, there were over 800 VR sessions, and our attendees around the world spent over 80 hours in virtual reality. So um, again, a very we were able to grow the program and make it more relevant um, in our global markets. Um, in terms of the keys to success, stakeholder engagement, so certainly engaging, this is our CMO, engaging our stakeholders and executives early on to get their feedback was key. Um, employees as ambassadors, the image that you see here are Morningstar employees. They actually walk, uh, helped attendees understand how to use the technology um, and were great champions for the program. Gamification, as I mentioned, was also key, and we use what I call um, big screens and small screens. So what you see on the large leaderboard, those were on large screens throughout the conference so people could see how they were doing against other uh, conference attendees, and then small screens. We had this in the mobile app as well. And then having a clear call to action related to our product offerings was also key, I and I think we made big improvements um, that, that in that area year over year. Um, with the over 800 people that went through our program, um, if they were opted in, they went into our lead nurture program and got more content related to our sustainable investing content and research. And then we also drove 80 actual leads through our sales process um, so that the sales team could follow up on um, some of our offerings related to ESG. And in 2020, we continue to build on our program. Um, we are creating Morningstar Sustainable City. So um, the globe was really a great experience, but people felt a little bit more removed. And um, also some of the gameplay was a little bit more complex that we need, than we needed to be. So these are some storyboards that we're working on right now for our 2020 program, where you're actually gonna be in this, uh, more engaged in a city. It's a smaller environment that you can interact with. You can pick things up, you can touch things, and you can actually actually feel like you're right in, in that scenario. And we've also improved the gameplay, making decision, making faster, more fast paced so that it becomes more fun. And then the other thing that we're working on is just a new mini game. So if people just want a quick fun game, um, we're gonna have a rooftop garden and you have to plant seeds as fast as you can, grow flowers, water the plants, get away, get pests away, and you'll earn points. And um, with the whole intention of the more flowers that you grow, you'll, you'll be saving more bees. Uh, and this sounds like maybe a little bit more removed from Morningstar, but um, where we host the conference in Chicago, um, there's a rooftop garden. They actually have bees up on the roof and um, it ties into the sustainability efforts that we want to highlight at the conference because conferences sometimes have such, can have a negative sustainability footprint. We wanna show that we're partnering with venues and um, supporting positive sustainable programs. And then as certain um, conference pass holders will also be eligible to go on a rooftop garden tour. So just this adds another experience to our conference um, and just also adds an element of fun. So getting started, how do you pilot these types of technology programs in your own organization? Just some lessons learned from Morningstar. You know, really educating yourself and your colleagues has been key for us. We hosted a vendor open house. You see people here trying out different types of technology. The things and the games that they're experiencing um, had nothing to do with Morningstar. It just showed them the potential of the technology. And then we also hosted workshops to explore the possibilities to tie our mission and our business outcomes to the different programs we wanted to develop. And as I've mentioned throughout, after each launch, we've shared what we've learned and really focused on how to continue to improve and iterate and build on our programs. Defining the advantages of both technologies is really key. Um, AR, again, really makes the use of mobile and the ubiquity of the mobile phone. So if, if honestly, if I only had the budget to spend on AR or VR, um, I would go all in on AR because AR, you can just reach more people. We did happen to have the budget for VR, and I'm, it's a program that I'm really proud that we've been able to use. But again, if you've got to make budget decisions, um, just the accessibility and the wide use of apps makes AR really um, an affordable opportunity. And then VR, again, it's more intense in terms of the scenario development, the scripts, the filming, the graphics, the equipment that you need. So those are all considerations you'll need to think about. 
With augmented reality specifically, some of the advantages, I think it's great to think about what apps does your company currently offer? And can you add value with augmented reality? Can you add more to that experience? And I definitely would recommend to keep it simple your first time out. We learned a lot. We tried to do things that were a little bit more complicated and had to scale back. And so um, keeping it simple and keeping it really tied to your goals are things that we've learned. And then again, thinking about that quote from earlier, how can you use the physical world around you as an asset in AR? With VR, some of the advantages, we trained our employees and put them in the customer's shoes. We took customers to new places. Um, we helped people see and feel the impact of their investing decisions. And then we wanted to offer a new way to engage with our products and services. And I think this can apply to any type of industry. Um, with AR and VR, you really have an opportunity to be memorable, drive action with your products and services, drive action with um, your, your people within the organization, educate people in a new way, help them make connections, improve training outcomes, and certainly make things fun with gamification. And I was trying to really think about a way to bring this back to the healthcare market and to all of you. And I, I love this quote by Dr. Bernard Lohn. Do as much as possible for the patient and little as possible to the patient. And I think in a market like today with what we've got going on, um, I think that's relevant more than ever. And I do really think through AR and VR, there's a lot of opportunities to do as much as possible for the patient and help them get to better healthcare outcomes. And I hope you've all been inspired by my talk today. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, just before, quick, well, I've also included in the deck some great learning and resources. I'm always reading. So these are just some things that have been helpful to me um, as I've been exploring AR and VR uh, on our journey. So um, great question. So we, um, the first year, I would say it took about six months to develop both AR and VR programs. We started um, in September of the previous year of the of the fall before we launched um, and by March of the we had a full AR app and VR experience that we could test um, and then iterate on um, that was so six not six months plus a couple months for testing so all in I would say about eight months and I should say too you know we had a development company that really led us through this process so um, they were key in being able to get up and running very quickly. Yes, so we do have um, this experience has been, um, as I mentioned, both experiences, the end investor shoes and the sustainable earth experiences. The ROI that I look at from an events perspective is being able to scale a program globally. So the first year, we, um, I think our ROI was the fact that we invested in this program. We took it to five different client events and we used it for employee training. We didn't see the same type of ROI that you would out of business leads, um, but we still saw lots of use over many different types of events. So for us, that was a good use of our investment. Um, with Sustainable Earth, in a similar way, we took this experience to four of our largest conferences and were able to showcase our investment research in a really engaging way. And we have tracked ROI through the leads um, that have come through our conferences. So we have been able to demonstrate a positive ROI on our investment in the VR experience specifically. The AR experience, we haven't um, turned a positive ROI in that we're making a profit on the AR, but now that we're gonna be selling um, AR experiences as part of our advertising, that's part of our growth plans. Um, yeah, the gamification really worked um, not just by having physical places and spaces to go to. So we had triggers where we wanted to direct people to go and, and scan those triggers. So having the triggers in the different places and spaces was important. But I think the key for us to, we found successful is actually engaging with Morningstar people um, so that they had badges and lanyards. Um, I was one of those folks that had a badge and lanyard on representing the social digital badge. And, and people were excited. They wanted to A, connect with Morningstar people, and they also wanted to get the token and scan the badge. So it did generate connection, a deeper connection, I think. And we saw that across all the people that were involved on the Morningstar side. And so we're taking that um, way where that we're expanding that is getting our sponsors involved. So all of our sponsors this year will have a lanyard that indicates they're part of the AR game, as well as um, tokens on their badge. Um, so again, hoping 
to draw connections between sponsors as well as the attendees and make those connections. And sponsors really value any type of engagement with an attendee. And so this offers them a chance to talk with people and connect with people they might not otherwise. So I think getting the people involved was a key to our success as well as offering some fun prizes. So um, on the print magazine side, um, there's we don't have a gamification element in the magazine, um, but really evaluating um, the video views, um, the scans of the triggers related to our data feeds has helped us see that people are interested in that um, additional content. So we've used the data and engagement through the print magazine um, to prioritize how we want to continue to develop the print experience, the print and AR experience. A follow-up question. So with sure. the tokens on the sponsor badges, is that only a certain level sponsors or is that something that you make available to all sponsors? So we have um, several levels of sponsorship. So that's a great question. Um, we're only offering this to the principal, lead, and major level. The associate sponsors were not offering um, this opportunity to, to, to that group of folks, but um, people pay at a higher level and it makes those experiences uh, um, more valuable. Um, so we are bifurcating or delineating, I should say, um, that, that AR experience. So it creates more value for the sponsor. We're not charging them for this additional experience. We're always trying to bring value to the sponsor packages and make them feel like we're innovating and thinking about ways to engage at the conference in new ways. 